There are towns and cities all over the world where tourists and visitors can explore areas that were once booming with life, but at one point or another were left to decay and crumble. Many of these abandoned towns remain eerily well-preserved, and the buildings left standing are reminders of another time. These ghost towns all tell a story. Haunting and beautiful, they live on as a testament to a time that has long gone by. Before we get into the story, if you are interested in early access to videos and live chats with the creator of Intrigued Mind, consider subscribing to our Patreon. Your support will greatly help us keep the channel producing more intriguing content. Also, be sure to check out Intrigued Mind's videos on other sunken towns like Lake Lanier, Lake Martin, Oscarville, Clarks Hill Lake, Aswan Dam, and Lake Mead. Here are five sunken towns in America that have long been forgotten. Elbow Woods, North Dakota Elbow Woods was once a Native American town nestled in a bend of the Missouri River and a heavily wooded forest, hence the name Elbow Woods. Established in 1891, the city was the headquarters of the three affiliated tribes on the Berthold Indian Reservation. Here, members of the three tribes lived a quiet life like any other small town in America. The town consisted of two stores, a post office, a school, and a hospital. It was also the hub of the Bureau of Indian Affairs for the region. The people who lived there lived off the land as a self-sufficient community. They had what was considered some of the best farmland in the state to raise their crops and livestock. All of this was made possible because its location was along a very fertile part of the river. Throughout the reservation, public school was offered to all children until 8th grade, which was uncommon at the time. After that, if a child decided to further their education, they would move into the dormitories at Elbow Woods. The school there functioned as a modern-day university, with teachers and students residing on campus. They had a successful sports program and produced a very successful basketball team in the 1940s. Then, in the early 1950s, government officials began the construction of the Garrison Dam with the goal of providing hydropower electricity to North Dakota. Upon its completion in 1953 by the United States Army Corps of Engineers, the Garrison Dam created a man-made reservoir named Lake Sakakoea. Although spelled differently, the lake was named after Sacagawea, the Shoshone woman who served as a guide to Lewis and Clark when their famous expedition made its way through the area. The lake flooded the area of Elbow Woods and displaced many families. Many were forced to move to Newtown, where ancestors of the affiliated tribes still live. Garrison Dam acts as a critical water supply and power supply, as well as providing irrigation and recreation benefits to those living in the area. It is rumored that the remains of the abandoned buildings that once made up the town of Elbow Woods can be seen in the deepest parts of Lake Sakakawea on a clear day. Kennett, California The town of Kennett, California, or Boomtown as it was once called, was established in the 1850s by miners who rushed to the area in search of gold and a life filled with riches. Pearson Reading was the first white settler in the area. The land around Kennett was inhabited by the Wintu, who had approximately 250 small villages in the surrounding area. Pearson Reading and the Wintu people generally got along well and shared agricultural practices. Their life would be disrupted in 1852 after word spread of an ore discovery in Shasta County. More and more settlers began appearing, and the Wintu people were displaced through violence and disease. Kennett's population increased significantly in 1883 when thousands of Chinese laborers were brought in to construct a small mining town and railroad camp. By 1911, 3,000 people inhabited the town. By then, Kennett was known for being the largest copper smelter on the West Coast and an integral supplier for the World War II war effort. Unfortunately, the fumes from the smelter would be blamed for the slow death of the land surrounding the town. With the end of the war, however, came the end of the city. By 1944, Kennett was nearly empty. For years, the federal government had wanted to build a dam to help irrigate the Sacramento Valley. Construction started in 1935, and the Shasta Dam was completed in 1945. The reservoir created by the dam, Shasta Lake, flooded the land surrounding Kennett, and the town now rests under 400 feet of water. Today, the Sacramento Valley is a huge provider of many staples of produce at all times of the calendar year, including citrus, tomatoes, and almonds. It is intriguing to think of the people that lived and memories that linger under those placid waters. Neversink, New York Formed in 1798, the town of Neversink got its name from the Indian word Newasink, which means continuously flowing. Its history has been hard for historians to accurately pin down because the town's location frequently changed as new towns were formed around it. It was initially one of two communities that formed from the town of Rochester. With a population of 2,458 people, Neversink was a decent-sized town and contained a post office and a two-room schoolhouse. In 1941, however, it was decided that a reservoir was needed to keep up with the needs of the growing population in the region. The towns of Neversink and Bittersweet were evicted, and over 6,000 acres surrounding them were condemned to make room for the building of the Neversink Reservoir. With terrible irony, Neversink found itself sunk under hundreds of feet of water. While some buildings were relocated to nearby towns, many were burned and demolished in what became known as the Final Harvest. It took two full years for the reservoir to fill. 
After the land was claimed by eminent domain, the town moved to its current location along Route 55. Enfield, Massachusetts Enfield, Massachusetts was named after one of its early settlers, Robert Field. Enfield was situated between the east and west branches of the Swift River, making access to a water supply and travel easy. Add to that the railroad that ran through the town, and Enfield was set up to be a thriving community. There had been chatter for years, since 1922 to be exact, that the town would fall to the inevitable progression of industry, but residents were sure that the thriving town would never actually be destroyed. There were too many buildings, so surely the government would try to find another solution. Rumors became a reality with the Swift River Act in 1927, which gave residents of the valley until April of 1938 to vacate the area. They were given $108 for every acre they lost and told to leave. Enfield was disincorporated in 1938, along with several other towns in the area, to make room for the Quabbin Reservoir. For an entire year, the valley went through demolition and deforestation by workers brought in from Boston, known as woodpeckers. The woodpeckers lived in the vacant homes and caused chaos in the area, burning buildings and churches without permission. The valley was on fire for months leading up to their removal, according to many reports. In the end, 2,500 people were relocated from Enfield, and 7,000 bodies were exhumed and moved to higher ground. Quabbin Reservoir is a primary source of water for Boston and the state's largest inland body of water. It does not generate power and has no flood control or navigation functions, making Quabbin the largest man-made reservoir in the entire world that is solely devoted to water supply. Many would never know that below its depths sits the underwater ghost town of Enfield. Butler, Tennessee Butler, Tennessee was once the only real town in Watauga Valley, serving as the commercial hub for eastern Tennessee. Although it was initially named Smith Hill after the original mill that was built in the town, it was later renamed in honor of Colonel Roderick Butler, who served in the Union Army. Located in the hills of Appalachia, the town relied on the resources surrounding it and was bustling with industries dedicated to lumber. There were crating companies, a casket company, and several lumber companies. In addition, the city had hardware and general stores, barber shops and beauty parlors, a cafe, hotels, and churches. When people envisioned small-town rural America, the town of Butler was a picture-perfect example. The original town of Butler, Tennessee, or Old Butler, experienced frequent and devastating flooding. Major floods occurred in 1867, 1886, 1901, 1902, 1916, 1924, and 1940. In 1942, the Tennessee Valley Authority began constructing the Watauga Dam and Reservoir as part of a massive undertaking to bring electricity and modernization to rural Tennessee. Around 175 buildings were moved to higher ground, which was an enormous undertaking. Additionally, when given the option, some people chose to exhume the bodies of their loved ones and move them to higher ground as well, rather than leave them behind. Still, many others decided not to disrupt the dead and leave them to rest in peace. Residents appropriately named their new town, New Butler. In 1983, the water in the reservoir was let out for maintenance, and residents of the area witnessed remnants of the town that had long been sunk in the depths. Don Stout's shoe shop and the jailhouse, both of which were made of stone, could still be seen and were remarkably well preserved. The need to supply water and power to the ever-growing populations across the country brought about the necessary creation of dams and reservoirs. Because of these dams, locals had better water quality, power, and irrigation. In most cases, the influx of tourism from water recreation also helped local economies. But a lot of personal loss accompanied the expansion. Today, each of these sunken towns has a history that few people, if any, remember. People are left to read about them in museums and sign markers along the highway. While their destruction came out of necessity, these towns served an important role in the lives of the people who inhabited the areas. Visitors cannot walk the streets and listen to the eerie sounds of silence because they now lay frozen in time at the bottom of some of America's most popular bodies of water. For more videos on the most amazing forgotten parts of our history, be sure to subscribe to the Intrigued Mind channel, like the video, and leave your suggestions in the comments below.